So Goose, create a Noxt application using the non-interactive installer directly into the current folder. And then convert my Figma design with file ID. Let me go back to copy it. I don't think I have it copied still. With file ID, this guy, everyone saw it? Yep. And I'm gonna paste it right here. Yep. Uh, into the existing application that we just created, right? Into the existing application. Get specific detailed and detailed information um, styling about each element. I'm trying to be as specific as possible, right? Section and components in each frame. Be sure to implement the design as closely as possible. Use Nox components, uh, let's see, and features as necessary, because you wanna like, you wanna build it the right way, right? Not just, you know, anyhow. Um, another thing, if you noticed, when we're checking out the, the features of the MCP, right? I think I already opened one second, one second, one second, one second. When we're checking the features of the MCP, it doesn't currently support exporting images. I caught that like uh, while I was looking at this. So it means that while we're able to do this design, we can't necessarily export the images directly from the Figma design yet. But I'm of the opinion that, oh, if I probably look for it, we'll probably find another Figma extension or we're able to extend this current Figma extension to also support you know, downloading images in the future. But I wanted to give an heads up to anyone else that's trying this uh, you most likely might not be able to download images directly yet. I'm filling your entire design with images, but it's very possible for you to download these images yourself from the Figma design. Um, for example, say, yeah, I just you know, click on this and then I export the image. I've done that already, but I'll show you guys. So you can always do this. Um, I don't know if there's a quicker way, because like I said, I'm not, an, I'm not a Figma expert, uh, but just heads up right now, you can download the images, but you can do everything else. Um, let's go back to, yeah, so our final statement in our prompt is for Goose to use, you can use a placeholder div with a gray background for missing images, for images rather, or missing assets, or missing assets. And like I took, mentioned about the interactive server, we also don't want Goose to go into like running a shell in the background, like npm run dev, where it doesn't exit, and we get into a continuous loop. So I'm gonna ask you like, if you need to run ask me first. So now before I press enter, I just wanna give us a little bit of insight into this prompt theory, <laughs> uh, or this prompt engineer, or whatever you wanna call it, right? I've tried as much as possible to highlight the things I want to achieve or the things I want to do or want Goose to do for me in this case into this prompt. Sometimes, especially if you are using a free uh, or a cheaper uh, LLM provider, you might want to token limit if you have to do like a large thing at once. Sometimes you can break out, you can break down the steps so that you're doing, um, you, you're doing stuff like at, uh, at intervals, right? So you could be like, hey, create a NOST application first and oh, hey, um, get the you know, Figma file details or a uh, update this image. So you can always do those situations with Goose. Or, uh, but in this case, I wanted us to like flesh out the entire thing that we want to do so that Goose is able to identify the steps in the prompt. Don't lose connection again. Awesome. Sweet. Uh, I don't know if you can see this, uh, like almost instantly, it's created the, the files over here. Let me see if I can zoom it in. Can I? Okay. Uh, but he says, I see we had an issue with the Nox installer. Let's try an alternative approach. Um, awesome. So now that we're setting up the Nox application, let's examine your Figma design. I'll get detailed information about the file. So um, I have a couple of questions in chat I'm going to quickly get into while we are doing this. 
one second. Oh, awesome. Sorry that I lost connection there for a second. Yeah, how can I give Goose access to my local files? Uh, once you open Goose, you can always change directory and specify what location, oh, let me take off the comments, uh, what location or folder that you want Goose to operate in. Because uh, Goose is already on your machine, on your device, and it has access to what's it called uh, in that environment, right? It doesn't go outside of the folder unless you ask it to. And you can always specify the file path. Uh, you can also click on the upload thingy here uh, to add a file for Goose to interact with. So I just wanted to point that out. Uh, yes, awesome. Thank you, Peter. Awesome. Uh, for one, I don't know how to pronounce the name. Let's go back to what we're building. Uh, this is what we've created so far. I'm going to come back to the VS Code. So I'm going to put this to the side and focus on Goose for now. So it's saying um, it's, I had an issue with the Nox installer. I basically ran into an issue, but then he found out a different way to be able to install this with Nox. And now that he has it set up, like showed up in the Figma design. I think I should probably keep this on so that you guys can see changes as it's being made. Yeah. Uh, we went ahead to get the Figma design. This is often a large output, by the way. This is very large. Like it takes every information. If I start scrolling right now, I've had this code for a long time. Uh, so it takes, it just gets all the details from the Figma uh, and is able to process it down here. So it says, let me analyze the Figma design and help implement it as a Nox application. I'll break this down into steps. First, let's create a necessary project structure. It's doing that. Uh, then we implement the components based on the Figma design. And then finally, we'll style everything according to the design specs. So it's going through like setting up the, what's it called, Nox again. And does initialize this and everything. So it has a navigation component. Uh, I'm going to be doing a back and forth with the design so we have an idea of what Goose is actually doing. Uh, so it has a navigation component. I'm guessing this is, this top is a navigation component. Yes, I think just with the sections over here. So there's a navigation component. There's an header section. There's a logo bar section, skills, gallery, testimonial, contact. Uh, so we can confirm that Goose is seeing all of that already. Uh, and now it's able to create all of these components right here. So you have sections, contact, gallery. I should probably bring this up here. <laughs> can we see the can we see the detail clearly? Um, all of this is still happening in real time. I think the changes are being made in real time. Like these files are still empty, or some of them are getting filled in real time. Um, let's see. So it goes, I'm gonna create all these components. Let's start implementing the navigation components, and that's what I just opened. One sec. The navigation of view, the code is there already. We'll come back to it. Um, let's start implementing navigation components. Probably had an error with the file path, uh, but it fixed it itself. And then we get the header section, we get a logo bar section, and it's still working, right? It's still working on it. Uh, so basically, it's going through the entire design step by step and implementing everything that we have here, right? All right. So it's created the, uh, where were we? Created the header section, uh, created the logo bar section, it's creating the skill section. You can see everything that is adding right here with the templates. And of course, in my VS code, I don't wanna cover what Goose is doing, but you can basically see, I've not written a line of code so far, I've been talking to you guys. <laughs> um, so it's creating all of this in real time and just taking the styling, even configure TypeScript, that's nice. Uh, the readme is the Nox readme. Packet adjacent is just as we have it. Um, up the view is still the same. I see, yeah, I think that's that's pretty much everything that we've asked so far. And it's still working on stuff. So let me bring this back here and collapse this guy. So we've created the gallery section, we've created the contact section, and now it's creating our main app layout and page. Uh, that should be the up the view, I think. Yes, up the view. So this is our main layout and page, and it's basically importing uh, the sections that we've created so far into it. So if you remember in my prompt, we're gonna find out now. I asked, uh, what's it called? I asked Goose, like, hey, if you need to run a server, let me know. <laughs> uh, but now the next step is, let's stop NOS configuration to use Tailwind CSS. Um, I didn't specify that, but I think from the code, I think you can notice it's already using, what's it called? Tailwind, I'm guessing that's from the styling of the design itself. So you probably recognized uh, some Tailwind class names or whatever the case is. I don't know how Figma works to that level, uh, but it's able to detect that based on the classes that are specified, we can use Tailwind. And as you see, this just came up. This is amazing. I mean, I took a second that I got taken aback for a second. Our technology is amazing. 
uh, well, yeah, it's creating the Tailwind configuration. Let's see how has it has it installed Tailwind yet, or is it just I don't know if is that in our packet or JSON? Okay, so no, he hasn't installed Tailwind yet. He's just configuring it and then to install Tailwind. Let's see how that goes. So it's creating a main CSS file. This is awesome. So it's that's created the needed files. I think he just created the asset of CSS files, which is our main CSS using Tailwind. And now it's installing the required dependencies, basically installing Nox.js Tailwind CSS. Um, basically, if you think about this, I gave Goose a, a top level set of instructions and is able to get the access of each of this, or rather the steps that it needs to complete. And as you go through each of the steps, finding out things that you need to do along the way and doing them by itself, I think it's it's amazing, right? <laughs> this video. Gotten an update from Goose. It says, awesome, we've been able to install Tailwind CSS as a deprecation, but it successfully installed this, this is awesome. Uh, and as you noticed, um, it's running the commands and also giving you the output of the command so you can see what, it, what actually happened along the process. Um, you can choose to, choose to check this out or just ignore it. And then the next step is giving us an update. The application is now set up with all the necessary components and styling based on the Figma design here that have implemented. Navigation bar with logo and menu items. I can't wait to show you guys what the final result. So this is our design. Uh, or rather, this is what Goose created for us. So far, so good. Um, and this is our intended design. So we've gone from this or this submission to Goose to this guy, to this. Thanks Goose, that worked. Like I said, thanks Goose. That worked. Um, initialize uh, a Git project. Initialize Git in this, in this folder and make a commit with the message, college is in terminal yourself anyways, with the message initial setup. That's, that's usually my first, <laughs> that's usually my first comment in every project. So let's see what this does here. So right now we've used the Figma extension to get the file. We've used the developer extension to create the Nox application. Now we're using the Git extension that we have installed to be able to initialize Git in this directory. It says it's already initialized. Interesting, when, just now? Right. Um, Okay, let me analyze Git. So now it's adding all the files and it's making the initial commits. Let's get back to VS Code real quick. And yep, we can see that all of this is now being tracked as part of Git, ladies and gentlemen, technology. <laughs> Perfect. I've completed the following steps, initializing new Git repository, added all the files to staging, and created initial commits with message initial setup. Awesome. So, um, Let's see, we're gonna ask Goose to get context. Um, I'm working with this file, with Figma ID. This is our last action, guys, before we call it a wrap, because I know, thank you all for you know, being here so far. So we're gonna see what, if Goose can get new context, like just you know, find a new design, fetch that design, check out a, an existing code base, because this is an entirely new session, and then use those, like what has been implemented already with what has, um, what's it called? With uh, the new information it gets on design and compare both of them. So I'm also going to have the design open on one side. Let me see if I can have that before I run this. Uh, damn. Too many tabs. I apologize. <laughs> right. So we have this here. This is what it looks like right now before we make any changes. Um, and I'm going to press enter. Drum roll. Boom. One possible thing that could have been the case is that, what's it called? If you look at the design, I'm speculating here, by the way. The latest work text might have been in multiple levels. Because uh, I think with Goose, it kind of specifies how deep it wants to check the nodes. Uh, so you say, let me have a the missing file. I said, I'm working with the portfolio template and some text elements are missing, specifically these two guys. So let me check the components where this text should be located. Awesome stuff. Uh, I see, let me check the text where these components should be located. It's checking that again. Um, these are all our files here. It's checking the content of the relevant files, updating. That's pretty cool. See, oh, latest work is here, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> but I think it has missed where the branding or image should be. Uh, but this is latest work that is now added to our code base. Yes, it was checking the depth. So that is that is progress. Uh, latest work has been added. Uh, let's see. Well, let's go back to 
to gallery. Yep, this is correct. I think the skills of V1 is not accurate because it makes it up. I think it probably makes it up with another set of text, which is these guys here, I think. So with the branding, image making, it probably found some other text in here. I don't know. Um, so probably I need to improve the prompt. Like, you know, hey, goose. So something different, right? Uh, but yeah, this is just showing how we can provide additional context to Goose, um, provide like, you know, Figma, Git, resources, access to make changes, fix any bugs that we might run into along the way. Uh, and this has been very exciting. Also see all of this come to life in uh, so far, so good. So um, we've, we have way above the one hour time. And I just wanted to point this out to you guys as well. I have run through this entire, what's it called, simulation already, like building this stuff out. And with AI tools, or which I say with LLM specifically, um, I got something different, but like, I mean, it worked obviously, uh, but there were like tiny, tiny differences based on even the same prompt and the same thing. So anytime, like Angie mentioned earlier, let me see if I can put that back on the screen. Always feel comfortable enough. If, you're, if your LLM is shy, always feel comfortable enough to say, hey, go ahead and do this, go ahead and do that. Always go ahead and make this change. So I hope this has been very insightful and educational to everybody. I uh, can always just use with all of these extensions with Figma, uh, we can find MCP servers online. Um, I'm very excited to find out the ways that designers can also continue to use Goose, whether they can code or they cannot code, or even for engineers that do not know how to work with Figma, in case maybe you're able to bring these designs over to your application and you can make all of these things work. So um, if we have no more questions, I'm leaving a bit of room for questions. Uh, thank you everyone for stopping by. Uh, this is welcome. I mean, thank you for stopping by the first episode of the Ghost Fight School. This was exciting to see how, you know, what tech can do for us these days. And I'm excited for the next episode and you guys joining us as well. So in the absence of questions, I'm going to give you a couple seconds because I think there might be a lag. Um, thank you again for coming and I will see you in the next